Good afternoon, everybody. I'm George Putnam. I work for Scandium International Mining Corp. There's a picture of our, uh, of our project in New South Wales. And I'm going to talk to you today about delivering on the Scandium promise. I'll make some forward-looking statements. All right. So, um, project status. This business, uh, this, this project, uh, we have one project in this company. It's the Ningen Scandium project. It's located in New South Wales, Australia. We own 80% of it. We've got a definitive feasibility study on file on CDAR now. It's got some great numbers in it. It's got a 33% internal rate of return. Uh, the capital cost on this project is, uh, is uh, uh, pretty reasonable. Um, I'll say modest for a, for a mining investment. Uh, at $87 million U.S., and uh, we, we are planning a nameplate production from this, uh, from this project of 38.5 tons of scandium oxide, 38,500 kilograms. It's a surface mineable resource. Uh, it's low strip ratio. It's, uh, a, um, uh, it's, a lateritic, it's, a, it's lateritic clay, so it's free dig. It's, um, we've got a demonstrated flow sheet on this project now. Uh, we've spent over $3 million uh, US dollars in developing our flow sheet. Timetable and milestones of production. We uh, just finished our last significant milestone uh, towards being allowed to build this project in New South Wales last week. On Wednesday of last week, we were granted a mining lease on the project. We've got offtake and construction uh, financing discussions underway presently, and we've got one offtake agreement in place. A little bit about our capital structure. We've got approximately 230 million shares outstanding. Um, we've got about $800,000 of cash in the bank, which is walking around money, but that's what we need. This is the stage we're at. We're in the, uh, we're in the customer acquisition mode at this point. We've got no debt. Uh, current price, $0.38 cents on Thursday. We were sitting uh, just under 40 today. Market cap, $86 million Canadian. And uh, you can see our stock range there and, uh, and some volume numbers for us, which are picking up. All right, um, let, me, uh, let me beat my chest for a moment here. Really, the starting point for this project for us came in June 2014. That was the point when we retained, um, when we retained control of the project and we were able to move forward to uh, begin to do metallurgical work in earnest and publish that. Uh, that was... Um, that was the point where we moved, we sold down 20% of the project in June 2014 and, um, and moved forward with an 80% ownership and no debt. So in October, we followed that up fairly quickly with the PEA, um, with a great IRR as you can see. Um, it was a high pressure acid leach design, our first. In, uh, in May 2016, we followed that up again with a full definitive feasibility study, which is on CDAR, it's on our website, plus 15, minus 5% error bars, uh, with, uh, with again a 33% internal rate of return. In, in June, just after we finished the definitive feasibility study, we filed an environmental impact statement, an EIS, and we filed a mining lease application with the government in New South Wales. We got our development consent in November of last year, which is probably the bigger of the two achievements. Uh, that's probably 85% of the pathway towards um, gaining approval and gaining the trust of, uh, of the state of New South, New South Wales to develop a project. And then, as I said last week, um, we got our mining lease grant from, from uh, New South Wales government. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a 35-month start to finish point on uh, what is a great deal of work and, and, and design, uh, that's, that's moving very fast and we're very proud of that. All right, so a few more details on our project. You have to start with a map, right? 
Um, we are located in the center of New South Wales, Australia, on the eastern seaboard of, uh, of Australia. We are in the center of a lateritic clay belt that runs up and down um, the New South Wales area where uh, Ian Chalmers has his project, Dubbo Zirconium. There is a lot of activity in nickel, cobalt, scandium, and platinum in this area. We've got a, a resource approximately 17 million tons grading about 230 average uh, ppm. We've got a, um, a limonite top layer that's over 300 ppm, and that's what we're going to mine in our definitive feasibility study uh, plan for 20 years. And in fact, the, the ppm in that project for 20 years is 409. It's in an excellent location. We've got good infrastructure. Uh, we've got um, We've got all the benefits of Australia, which is really a mining-friendly environment, and it's a great international jurisdiction. The project has significant upside potential. The DFS uses about a little less than 10% of the total resource that we have established now, measured and indicated. So, let's talk about Scandium's place in the uh, in the specialty metals marketplace today. Where is scandium currently made? Almost all of the scandium that we know about is coming from co-product production. It's coming from production in China. It's coming from production in Russia. The Russian production is basically from uh, uranium projects. The Chinese production is on the tail end of TiO2, TiO2 pigment plant production. So you can see some of the issues here. There's not very much scandium uh, uh, available today in the marketplace. We estimate about 15,000 kilograms, 15 tons. Uh, if, it's, if that number's wrong, it's probably a little more than that, but it's still not much. What's the value proposition for scandium? Well, scandium makes any aluminum alloy lighter. If you, if you uh, learn one thing about scandium today in this room, understand that scandium changes. It's a grain refiner for aluminum. Scandium particles sit inside the aluminum um, crystal itself, and they sit on the grain boundaries, and they add strength. And they do that without spoiling all the un other properties in the alloy that they happen to be introduced to. That's unusual. You can make, you can make aluminum stronger, but you often have trade-offs in terms of loss of properties and particularly brittleness. So there are many other properties that scandium enhances in, in certain alloys, uh, certain alloy families. Beyond weight savings, obviously, you've got corrosion resistance improvements, flow rates in um, extrusion processes, and full weldability. You've heard that discussed before, too. Scandium is also a, a, a terrific heat stabilizer in a solid oxide fuel cell. Probably half of the scandium being used today is being used by Bloom Energy in solid oxide fuel cells. So there's a big market there already. So we talk about improvements in scandium strength. How dramatic is it? Well, it depends. It's always good. Sometimes it's pretty exceptional. And you can see here the 1 series and the 5 series alloys have pretty substantial strength pushes. The pink bars are, um, are change to strength levels in all seven alloy families plus the aluminum lithium variants of those. So what do we do with scandium today? It's a marketing slide around where scandium goes. On the, um, on the left side of that, uh, of that slide you see in yellow, you see sporting goods, uh, aircraft, solid oxide fuel cells, where I said about half of it goes, and lighting. Down the center, you can see where that growth is. And this is, these are natural extensions, in many cases, of the uh, applications that are in use today. You can see uh, they're, they're substantial, and they are, they are really supply constrained in, in, in those circumstances. In terms of um, new applications that aren't in much in use today, you can see automotive, marine, uh, high-speed trains, computer cases, and, and electronic enclosures. All good applications for scandium, but you need a lot more scandium than we have today to get started in those areas. So 
before you go selling Scandium, and I'm taking you down into our marketing conversation a bit further, you've got to figure out who your customer is. Well, in the Scandium space, when you're selling properties, you're selling properties to the end-use customer. It's the customer, the end-use customer that's going to tell you um, what Scandium is worth and how much he wants based on the properties you can deliver to him. Now that's over on the right side of that slide, on the, at the green end, we're on the, well, obviously we're on the other side of that, and there's a large supply chain in between us and, and them. The answer we found is that the customer is everywhere along that chain. You've got to talk to all levels. You've really got to uh, think about a pull-through strategy for Scandium because you're selling properties when you're selling an improved aluminum alloy, Scandium, aluminum Scandium alloy. We'll drill down a little further. Um, so how this this sounds pretty uh, pretty complex? How do you tackle how do you tackle this kind of a conversation in a number of different markets? I've picked one here, automotive. Uh, we've talked a lot about aircraft, and there's been a lot of good conversation around aircraft applications. It's obviously obviously a place for aluminum scandium alloys. Anything you lift off the ground, light weighting is the imperative. So it plays in automotive as well too. So what we do is we talk to automotive folks about the different properties and we prioritize those from top to bottom in terms of which, which property that automotive group is going to value the most. We talk about the cost impacts of those things and then we talk about the scandium advantage in each case. And it becomes a very powerful dialogue with folks. The engineers are very receptive to it. I, was, I went to the lightweighting conference in Birmingham, uh, automotive lightweighting conference, two weeks ago, and it was really stunning. Uh, this slide uh, is uh, a Volkswagen slide, and it really shows, in the first instance, the blue bars on the left are, um, are steel and steel improvements based on engineering over the past 15 years uh, to lightweight steel cars. Then you can see um, aluminum next to it, uh, and you can see a 40% improvement. We got between a 5 and a 25% improvement, engineering <coughs> improvement, in, in, steel, um, in, steel, in steel body redesign, and then we picked up a 40% improvement in aluminum. Notice also that the benchmark is now aluminum. It's not steel anymore. Uh, magnesium, carbon fiber, uh, they're, they're, they're benchmarked against aluminum now, and you can see that blue line going, going upwards. Uh, that's cost. That's the cost implication of those trade-offs. So you can see the lightweight imperative is there, and you can see aluminum is very much at the forefront of that. This is the other mantra from the lightweighting conference. The right material, the right place, the right time. They're saying properties. Properties, properties, properties. And aluminum scandium carries properties that allow engineers to use it in more places in ways they haven't been able to before. <laughs> this is an old slide. I leave it in uh, for you to, uh, to look at on the website or on the, on the presentations that we have for you. Aluminum alloys in, in many applications don't represent a significant portion of the value of the product. It's the properties that will sell the, uh, the scandium advantage. I'll read you to finish. This project that we have is construction ready now. In fact, I hope to announce relatively soon an EPCM contractor award on, on that project. Our financials, we think, are quite good. Our resource is a world game changer in the space. We're deep into the customer acquisition phase now. We're delivering on the Scandium progress. Exciting times. <laughs>